In the world, y'all can vote for Donald Trump when he come back up again. If it is, if y'all do vote for him, y'all some stupid motherfuckers. I'm saying that to y'all early. This punk motherfucker don't care. So I'm saying you already know what it is. It's your boy laid back with another reaction, another review, another episode. A hey, TikTok. You up to bet. It's your boy Lay Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. We back with another reaction. Make sure you hit the like button, man. Appreciate that. We back with another reaction. We got TikTok conspiracy theories. We got some Donald Trump stuff. We got some government stuff. We got some, it's a lot of stuff going on in this one. I'm just gonna tell you, gonna be on a roller coaster with this one. Project 2025, it's just a lot going on. Um, you make it to the end of this one, I need you to put in the comments, you a real one for real. Do not forget to drop that in the comments. That's if you make it to the end of this one. Also, I got a TikTok playlist. If you went to this stuff, man, you can go binge watch it, have a blast, but it's going to take you on a trip. Let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad. What's popping? Let's get it. Read through all 900 pages of Project 2025 so mm -hmm. you don't have to. Here's the most important things you need to know in 90 seconds. Okay. You probably have heard about Project 2025, the well-funded effort by the Heritage Foundation and more than 100 other organizations to mm -hmm. enable a future anti-democratic presidential administration to take swift, far-right action that would take our country backward. A key part of that effort is this 900-page public playbook called the Mandate for Leadership that has detailed policy recommendations for how to cut wages for working people, mm. dismantle social safety net programs, reverse decades of progress for civil rights, redefine what? the way our society operates, and undermine our economy. Even more concerningly, a lot of what they propose- Do your own research. I always gotta say that, do your own research. Let's go. Those would be done by the president and the executive branch alone without waiting for congressional approval. While many of these plans are unlawful, winning in the mm. courts is not guaranteed. That's why we've put together the People's Guide to Project 2025, a first of its kind resource to help all of us to learn more about these threats and fight back. Our guide focuses specifically on threats that could be carried out by an anti-democratic president and their administration mm. and describes the ways they would harm millions of workers, stop efforts to lower drug prices, restrict access to medication abortion, and so much more. To read the report, visit our website at democracyforward.org slash project 2025. And make sure to follow us here as we continue to break down Project 2025 and the threats it poses to people across the country. This is going to be interesting. Project 2025. We keep hearing about this over and over that if, big if, Donald Trump is elected president, he's got big plans for your future. Well, I read through it. And basically, there's 2,025 reasons Donald Trump should not be president. But let me mm. just tell you a few that Project 2025 includes. It is a ban on abortion pills. So taking away your right to make decisions about your body. Mm. It is a gutting of the federal workforce, the people who take care of education, the people who protect us, the people who serve in the military. It's getting rid of them. Mm. It's also raising the retirement age. So you're going to work your whole life basically to get benefits that you paid into wow. we can't let that happen so let's make sure that it never comes to life and that donald trump is never president Project 2025 is a far-right manifesto. It is a 1,000-page bucket list of extremist policies that would uproot every government agency and disrupt the lives of every person mm. who calls this country home. The Department of Education would be eliminated, cutting students off from civil wow. rights protections and ending essential Title I funding for K-12 through schools. The Department of Justice would go on a murdering spree. It would rush to use the death penalty and expand its use to even more people while circumventing due process protections. Project 25 not only calls for national book bans in schools, but mm. also creates a list of banned words for the federal government that would be deleted from, quote, every federal rule, agency regulation, contract, grant, and piece of legislation that exists. End quote. Here are just a few of the words on the list. Diversity, gender, reproductive health, and of course, conservatives want to ban the word abortion. 
On that note, abortion care would be inaccessible and illegal no matter where you live. Now, mm. we could have an entire hearing on how these policies would quite literally ruin and end lives, and I didn't even touch upon proposals for housing, climate change, worker protections, and more. If enacted, Project 25, 2025 would destroy the federal government as we know it. Not enough people know what Project 2025 is, which is terrifying because it's going to be affecting everyone. The Project 2025 plan is not a game. I said in the previous video that I was very surprised that a lot of Americans didn't actually know what the policies within Project 2025 actually entailed. But now I'm starting to think that that was actually made up to be on purpose. So I'm going to explain everything in the simplest terms with no more than one sentence answers. Because I cannot stress this enough. You will need to know this if this is going to be your reality. Hey, number one, the climate crisis. That doesn't exist anymore. I'm going to be referencing this image because I know a lot of people are visual learners. Pause to read. So as you can see, Project 2025 aims to dismantle environmental regulations, which can lead to the increase of unchecked pollution, accelerating climate change and the climate crisis. None of this should be surprising considering Donald Trump has literally said in the past that he believes climate change is a hoax. This is to directly contrast Biden, who has invested over 50 billion into tackling the climate crisis. I am not a Biden fan, do not get me wrong, but I'm just gonna put the facts here, okay? This is a screenshot from Homeland Security. Number two, corporate interests are the only things that are going to matter from here on out. Pause wow. to read. Again, none of this should be surprising because Trump is a businessman. This isn't even mentioning that Project 2025 aims to cut social welfare programs and cut the funding of that also. Another mm. big bad one that people don't realize, which is essential in learning international political economics, is that Project 2025 aims to increase executive power. This literally means centralizing the political power within government and reducing its size. It means less voices, less representation of the actual people that they're supposed to be serving, and less checks and balances, which can result in most cases in the abuse of power. Typically mm. in a democracy, you want a well-rounded government that isn't going to be an echo chamber for certain ideals and are only gonna echo the certain ideals of the select few. It makes sense as to why corporate interests are gonna be a main priority. And this is typically how authoritarian governments are formed. But oh wait, didn't Trump literally vow to become a dictator for a day? if he gets re-elected, so none of this should really be surprising. Next is the slashing of certain departments. A good example of that is gonna be the Department of Education. This will have these results. There's also gonna be a massive backpedaling of civil rights and voting protections. That's baffling mm. to me because America's supposed to be the heart of a democratic society, and then look what Project 2025 is aiming to do. We also have the gutting of the Homeland Security and Trump loyalists to fill government positions. And I really want you guys to focus on this point right here. I want to remind you guys that this is supposed to be a democratic society and the centralization of power in this way, the concentration of power in this way, only historically speaking, have resulted in authoritarian regimes and governments. And I don't even know what the fuck this is. And a reminder that they're gonna be doing all of this alongside the things that I mentioned in the previous video, AKA backpedaling on reproductive rights, backpedaling on LGBTQIA rights. Everything that we know about democracy, in America at least, is going to change if this is passed. You cannot tell me otherwise. It's not fear mongering. It is literal empirical proof that people are literally understanding. Somehow it's only coming this late. You need to wake up America. Coming from a Brit, I know. Mm. Ooh wee. How do they not know about Project 2025? Family, your friends, the people that you know on social media. How do they not know about Project 2025? Well, they probably don't know because no one's ever really broken it down for them. That is exactly what I'm about to do in this video. Please do all the things that you know to do so this can reach as many people as possible. Project 2025 is the conservative promise for America, a new mandate for leadership that lays out the plan for when a Republican is elected as president. It's almost 1,000 pages and is divided into four pillars. It includes an 887 page policy agenda, a presidential personnel database of vetted conservatives like a conservative LinkedIn, a presidential administration academy to train these people to achieve the Project 2025 policy agenda and a 180 day playbook, which is what they hope to achieve in the first 180 days if Trump takes office in January of 2025 or really whenever any Republican takes office. Mm. And the plan has four distinct goals. To number one, restore the family as a centerpiece of American life and to protect our children. 
dismantle the administrative state and return self-governance to the American people, to three, defend our nation's sovereignty, borders, and bounty against global threats, and to four, secure our God-given individual rights to live freely, what our Constitution calls the blessings of liberty. Sounds harmless enough, right? Well, when you look at how they will achieve these four goals, the great white light slowly comes into view. American public education is a central focus of the plan. Project 2025, when enacted under Trump presidency, would eliminate the Department of Education. Damn. This part of the executive branch enforces civil rights law, protecting black and brown people against discrimination without recourse. Title IX, mm. which ensures that girls have equal access to sports, education, and opportunity, and would reset the definition of sex to mean only biological sex assigned at birth for all Americans. And while we all know public schools are struggling with less funding and a state-created shortage in some places of teachers, Project 2025 will decrease funding to public schools while That's increasing crazy. funding to religious education through the expansion of school choice policies by giving federal funds to states as block grants with no strings attached as to how those funds can be allocated. And also in regards to education, it's going to take away Pell Grants. Rights of women is a big focus of Project 2025, N not in regards to like protecting the rights of women, but in regards to aborting them like the rights. Project 2025 will re reverse FDA approval of mefepristone, prohibit stem cell research, reverse the Biden administration's support for travel to get abortion health care, withdraw Medicaid funds for states that require abortion insurance, and mandate that the CDC track all abortions while collecting data about abortion, abortion survivors, and abortion-related maternal deaths. Mm. Not to mention what it will do in regards to divorce, in regards to a woman's legal rights regarding divorce, and also custody of children. Human rights for LGBTQIA plus Americans, even more bleak. Gender affirming care will literally end for all Americans who need it. Men and women who happen to be trans, non-binary, or intersex will be classified as having a mental disorder. Damn. And gay marriage protections will cease to exist because Project 2025 mandates that the only definition of marriage can be between an assigned gender at birth man and an assigned gender at birth woman. That's the only mm. marriage that can lawfully exist. And mm. this is just the surface level of the plan. As we approach America's Independence Day, I will do a deep dive into Project 2025, focusing on what it means for the black community, the LGBTQIA plus community and women's rights. All videos that relate to Project 2025 will be together in my Project 2025 playlist. Know what to do so that you get those videos sent to your FYP. What is going on, man? What is Let's talk on? about Project 2025. Democrats have been sounding the alarm about this document, more than 900 pages. Um, what's, what is it, and, and what are Democrats so riled up about? I think critically, it, you should point out, this is not a campaign document. These are advisors, though, many of whom will probably be in a second Trump White House should he win in November. What it is, is it's, it's on paper. <laughs> and I think when you put 900 plus pages of conservative policies, and the vast majority of them, are strong conservative policies that you and I would be very familiar with. But they're also very aggressive. And I think some of them would be considered radical, even by some Republicans, when you look at the immigration space, when you look at the federal agency space, when you look at what they would want to do uh, with abortion and things like mifepristone. They spell them out in detail, written each chapter by somebody who either had a past uh, high level role in the administration mm. or could likely have one in a second administration, laying out what they aspirationally would like to do. I think the reality is, is it actually tracks really closely with what we've seen from the Trump team, from the campaign on their own website. The president has been very upfront about his expansive policy goals for a second term. And it's also this, Project 2025 is not operating in isolation, nor are they operating in a vacuum. There is a constellation of outside groups, very well funded, former Trump administration mm. officials that would likely be in a second term that are doing similar things, just less publicly. Trump would enter the White House, not only with those very loyal advisors, no John Kelly's, no General Mattis, but also with a policy team that is far more fleshed out than we ever saw in a first term. Project 2025 calls for autistic people and detention centers. What? So some of you have tagged Project 2025 in my comments. And so I did some deep digging. It seems to be the liberals fear mongering. This kid in this video, he explains it the best. So they're 
pushing propaganda to get you to vote for Democrats who have put us in the situation that we're in today. Are the gas prices higher? Yes. Are utilities higher? Yes. Are groceries higher? Yes. In fact, we're spending $900 more per month for basic necessities than we were under President Trump. So before you go believing the propaganda, actually do your research into what Project 2025 is. Watch this kid's video. Oh my. This here kid gives me hope for the future that intelligent people can see propaganda when they see it. Good job, bud. Good job. So Taraji B. Henson at the BT Awards told all the people in the audience and the millions of people watching to search up what Project 2025 was, and it was the... What's your thoughts on Project 2025 in the comments? Let me know what you think, man. The number one most searched thing to the point where Google couldn't even keep track of how many people were searching it, and I was so shocked reading it, and I'm going to give you the top three things that literally had me too stunned to speak. So Project 2025 is what Donald Trump and the Republican Party are trying to push through and it will literally change the way that our government works and it's so insane and let's go through it. Number one is abortions will be banned nationwide. Let me break down how crazy this is, okay? I am Christian and I am pro-choice. If at the age of 21 today I accidentally get pregnant, I'm keeping the baby even if I don't think I'm ready for it, I'm going to tighten up and be ready for it because that's what my religion tells me to do. Now, let me move this on to, let's say, 10-year-old Stacy. If 10-year-old Stacy gets and she gets pregnant, she literally has to keep that child under Project 2025, even though a predator That's did that crazy. to her. Even if her parents think that she's not ready to have a child, she will literally have to keep it. My whole thing is, the Republican Party always strives that the government doesn't have too much power over the people. They're literally taking away women's reproductive rights. What will it be tomorrow for the rest of the American people? Speaking of too much power, Trump will have even more power than he already has as president. Now he'll be able to fully control the military and send the military against its own civilians. So if one day everyone mm. decides to protest against Trump and Trump feels like it, he'll literally be able to send the military against those protesters. That's a dictatorship, literally. Don't even get me started on how many loopholes there are. Now, if he wants to make something law, he doesn't even have to go through Congress. He can just use the loopholes and sign it into law himself because he feels like it. And I'm not talking mm. about the veto system. This is something completely separate. Number three, you know how we have the FDA, the one that makes sure our food is safe, the CDC that makes sure that we're in good Supposedly. health, the Department of Transportation, Department of Education, and they all have their own laws, right? Forget that. They're getting rid of the Department of Education. And if you ask me why, because they don't want you to learn about racism and slavery and how we got to where we are today as black people in America. They don't want you to learn about the gays and the days. And if you're an ignorant gays black person who doesn't think that this will affect you, let me as a black person educate you on why it does. One day your kids will come home where there's no Department of Education and they'll ask you why you can't tell them exactly from Africa where you are from. And you're going to have to explain to them that your ancestors were snatched up from Africa, brought to America to be slaves, fought for 400 plus years to get those freedom and rights. And that's why you can't point out where from Africa you are from and explain to them about your culture. That's why it's important. Don't get it twisted. Trump is not for the girlies. He's not for the African-Americans. He's not for the middle class. And he's not for the gays and the days. And by no means am I saying that Joe Biden is better. I'm just saying you better educate yourself because if you're not a rich white man in America, this affects you. And shout out to Raji P. Henson for using your platform because I know that definitely inspired to use mine. Man, this is going to be some spicy shit. The Project 2025 plan is not a game. Look it up. Hey, we're back with a part two video about Project 2025 and what it'd do to our country. See, the Heritage Foundation, they laid out a blueprint for how Trump would run the country if he ever got back in. See, first you have to realize that conservatives for decades, they've wanted to destabilize government, you know, states' rights. And that includes defunding government programs that help our country run. One thing they promised to do is cut transit spending. So that means cutting money for the maintenance of trains, buses, and rails. And those of us who have student loan debt, they want to cut any chance of relief. I know a lot of people feel that the current administration hasn't done enough for student debt relief, but Project 2025 has promised to make it worse for borrowers. They want to replace the current income-based repayment plan and force borrowers to pay thousands more per year. Whoa. And the cruelty doesn't stop there. Project 2025 wants to destroy any government assistance that helps those struggling in America. Damn. That includes reforming SNAP, the program that provides food assistance for low-income Americans. They want to create strict work requirements for someone to receive nutritional assistance. Think, if someone is disabled or there's a widow mother who has to take care of her kids, how could they meet work requirements? 
I don't care what anyone says. Every human is deserving of food, especially right. in the richest country in the world. We already have 13% of our children that go to bed hungry at night, and Project 2025 would only make it worse. Democracy Forward says that under Project 2025, 4.3 million people would lose overtime protection, 40 million could have their food assistance reduced, Damn. and 220,000 jobs would be lost. I'm telling you now that the cruelty is the goal and that these people are ready to do whatever to keep America white and Christian and rich. And if you don't believe me, listen to the president of the Heritage Foundation himself. That we are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. What? What? <laughs> Project 2025 is coming after no-fault divorce. Do you know why? Because they want to return us to a time when women were baby factories and relied on their husbands for financial survival. This wow. article, written by Emma Waters in 2022 for the Heritage Foundation, Waters lays the groundwork for opposing no-fault divorce. Now. Don't forget, who is the primary organizer of Project 2025? That's right, the Heritage Foundation. Take a look at this 2023 CNN article. This explains the ramp up in Christian nationalist commentators like Matt Walsh continually complain about no-fault divorces and how it harms men. It also explains how House Speaker Mike Johnson has been an opponent of no-fault divorce for years, even though the data clearly shows that because of no-fault divorce, there has been an 8 to 16 percent reduction in the number of women intentionally unaliving themselves. Mm. Also, the number of women who have been exposed to domestic violence has been reduced drastically. All thanks to no-fault divorce. In an article earlier this month in The Guardian, it reported that lawmakers in Oklahoma, Louisiana, Nebraska, and of course, Texas, are working to oppose no-fault divorce. We know what this means. It's only a matter of time before other states will follow. We know that Project 2025 is one of the biggest threats to human rights. This is crazy. Project 2025 clearly lays out how they plan to replace all federal employees with Trump loyalists. We also know that Project 2025 is happening right now with the attack on the LGBTQ rights, the elimination of DEI programs, Christian nationalists opposing IVF, and now they're coming after contraception. Under Project 2025, all protections against discrimination based on gender or sexual identity will be eliminated. Crazy. Project 2025 prioritizes Christian nationalism. It ensures that only white Christian men will remain in power. They do not care who suffers underneath this power structure. Wow. Stay awake, use your voice, and vote. What are we walking into? What are we walking into right now, man? In the world, y'all can vote for Donald Trump when he come back up again. If it is, if y'all do vote for him, y'all some stupid motherfuckers. I'm saying that to y'all early. This punk motherfucker don't care. So I'm saying that to say this. Don't vote for that nigga. Please don't. Look what he do. He just don't give a fuck. Y'all honest, blue-collar, hard-working people and suffering. So if he don't care about y'all, he really don't give a fuck about us. So fuck him too. And fuck everybody down with Donald Trump. I said he yeah, Snoop Dogg. Go fuck him. Whoa. I ain't never seen that clip. If you cannot afford to move out of this country within the next year, I need you to take Project 2025 and Trump potentially getting reelected very seriously. Because if it happens, Trump and his supporters have every intention of taking the livelihood away from a lot of people. If it's already hard for you to take care of your financial responsibilities, to take care of your family, if it's hard for you to find medical aid for yourself or people that you love, Trump is going to make that harder. They plan to put policies in place that will make it very hard for everyone to live in this country unless you have a six-figure salary. No one is exaggerating, and I understand that with the political climate that we're in, it can be very overwhelming, and I understand people that choose to ignore it. However, no one is exaggerating when they say our livelihoods are at stake. It's not going to be a rough four years. It's going to be a rough 20 years. It's going to be a rough 30 years, 40 years, because they're putting policies in place that are going to last. What you got to say about Project 2025? Have you heard of Agenda 47? Say what? Agenda 47. Nah. It's the actual platform that Trump is going to push when he becomes president. It's listed on his official campaign website. 
Project 2025 is not to be found there. Matter of fact, Project 2025 was created by a conservative think tank named the Heritage Foundation. It's supposed to make it legal to be has nothing to do with Trump. Trump has neither endorsed nor supported this platform. He has his own. But I saw on BET. I don't care what any Hollywood elite or BET awards show hosted by Taraj J.P. Henson have told you about Project 2025. It is not a talking point of President Trump's campaign, nor is it something that he's interested in. It's just another tool to fear among you and to just continue to vote for the same people over and over again and never breaking the cycle of chaos that we see within the black community. Once again, just look at the decades long of Democrat control over black cities. Uncle Tom. It makes sense, man. But listen, do you? Be mad at what you want to be mad at, but you ain't mad at Trump. Man, shut up, coon. <laughs> Damn. Number three, Project 2025 envisions a militarized police state where law enforcement is answerable only to the president. Maybe you live in a blue city or state and you think, I don't have to worry about my librarians being imprisoned? Guess again. Page 553 lays out how Trump's Justice Department will take over local law enforcement if they don't like how your own elected officials are running things. And they will prosecute district attorneys that they don't agree with. The plan also strips the FBI director of their independence, making them a lackey of the president. See page 549. And on page 104, the plan reduces the number of military generals, so power is more fully consolidated in the commander-in-chief. A central focus of the new police state would be Trump's goal of undertaking the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. Immigration enforcement is to be conducted like a war, with the military deployed within the U.S., and millions of immigrants rounded up and thrown into newly constructed mass holding camps. A powerful Whoa. new border security and immigration agency would replace the Department of Homeland Security. See page 133. This would also mean the DHS's efforts to combat far-right domestic terrorists would stop altogether. One plan that is not in the public document, but that members of the Project 2025 team reportedly disclosed to the Washington Post, is to invoke the Insurrection Act to have the military suppress public protests against mm -hmm. Trump. I'm just scratching the surface. The plan is loaded with actions ranging from changing labor rules to effectively end overtime pay, that's on page 592, Crazy. to slaughtering wild horses, that's on page 528. You can do your own deep dive on their website, project2025.org. Y'all let me know in the comments. If y'all talking about irrelevant bullshit, Cardi this, be a that, girl, you need to be doing your homework. Because Project 2025 is a fucking fool. And if you haven't heard about it, let me enlighten your ass real quick. So Project 2025 will be implemented by the Republican Party come January 20th of next year if said candidate is elected. Meaning that for women, you will no longer have access to birth control. No IUD, no Nexplanon, no, birth control. no depo, no pills. You will no longer be able to terminate a pregnancy due to a medical issue, due to an unfortunate event wow. or a choice. Bitch, hang it up. Flat screen. You are a medical single mother. Issue. You are on the chopping block. Hold on, man. Medical issue. So say if you about to have a kid or you in that situation and you could potentially die from having a baby. You. I don't know. Look, this is crazy. This is crazy. If you have a child that goes to a T1 school, they are on the chopping block. If you are a part of the LGBTQIA community, girl, you're on the chopping block. Hang it up, flat screen. You won't have any type of sex discrimination flat coverage, screen. meaning that if your job decides to fire you because you're gay, they're going to fire you and won't have to deal with any type of repercussions. If you are trans, you won't be able to enroll in the military. You will not receive Medicare nor Medicaid coverage, girl. You done for. You suffer from mental or physical disabilities, girl. Chopping block, hang it up, flat screen. If you flat are Muslim, screen. there will be Muslim bans. If you suffer from wow. substance abuse, you are a target. There will be mass deportations, girl. If you are a college student receiving Pell Grants, bitch, uh -uh. You're, you're done for. Critical race theory and gender ideology will no longer be taught, talked about. It will not, uh, no. Oh my gosh, they're gonna even try to get rid of uh, the Department of Education. And I'm sure there's a lot that I missed because it's 920 fucking pages of bullshit nonsense. But y'all need to make sure y'all do what y'all need to do to make sure this shit is not implemented. Implemented. Because girl, if it is, we are, well, I'm leaving. <laughs>
crazy. Are single mothers the new government target? I'm from space, I'm Project 2025 doesn't just demonize single mothers. It wants to change policies to punish single moms and perhaps even remove children from single parent households. Wow. Don't take my word for it. Let me show you. Their top priority is promise number one, restoring the family as the centerpiece of American life. And they specifically call out unmarried mothers as a reason that the American family is in crisis. 400 pages later, when you get to their section on the Department of Health and Human Services, you see that they want to rewrite what the definition of a family is to be comprised of a married mother and father and their children. Mm. Saying that currently Health and Human Services is too focused on LGBTQ plus equity and subsidizing single motherhood. And saying that these policies should be repealed and replaced by policies that support the formation of stable married nuclear families. It's not enough to be uh, heterosexual, by the way, because they also call out homes with non-related boyfriends as being one of the most dangerous places for a child. Wow. And they don't much like surrogacy either. In the context of emerging reproductive technologies, Health and Human Services should never place the desire of adults over the right of a child to be raised by the biological fathers and mothers who conceived mm. them. Here's a horrifying paragraph. The Secretary of Health and Human Services anti-discrimination policy statements should never conflate sex with gender identity or sexual orientation. Rather, the Secretary should proudly state that men and women are biological realities that are crucial to the advancement of life sciences and medical care, and that married men and women are the ideal natural family structure because all children have a right to be raised by the men and women who conceived them. Mm. They also want to promote reunification as a part of child support, which is terrifying for domestic violence survivors. And they want to institute a healthy marriage and relationship education program uh, in every state level high school in America with curriculum on healthy marriages. Oh, I wasn't kidding about child support either. Child support in the United States should strengthen marriage as the norm, restore broken homes, and encourage unmarried couples to commit to marriage. There's also a line in here that basically says that if you're the parent of a transgender child, that that is child abuse. Whoa. And if everything I've read hasn't sounded too bad, you haven't been reading between the lines, and this line here should clear it up. But the pro-family promises expressed in this book and central to the next conservative president's agenda must go much further than the traditional narrow definition of family issues. Every threat to family stability must be confronted. This resolve should color each of our policies. And any family that's not a uh, heterosexual married family, that's a threat to them. Wow. This is some wild But I stuff. want to be very clear that this was intentional and that this is exactly what Republicans have been going for. We've seen it. They've made you have the Heritage Foundation. You have lots of folks who are on record saying, you know, not only do they want to go after abortion, not only do they want to go after reproductive freedom, they're going after IVF. They're going after contraception. We have a mifepristone uh, ruling that is that is coming down from the Supreme Court and Clarence Thomas enriching himself from the same folks who are saying that they are trying to control women's bodies quite explicitly and going beyond that. They also want to control recreation, what they call recreational sex. Yes. Recreational sex. What? This is this is so clearly what? a patriarchal theocracy that has embodied itself in the DNA of an entire political party in the United States of America. And as women and as any non-binary and queer person in this country, they must be defeated. They, they, there should never be room for this kind of control by force of a, over another person's body in this mm. country. And they can walk it back as much as they want. They have done this. They, who put those judges there? Not Democrats, yeah, not yeah. independents. Republicans put those judges in there. Republicans are taking women's bodies by force, and we cannot let them do it. It has to come to an end. Freedom of what? <laughs>
We must make America pray again. That's not a joke. That's a campaign promise. Welcome to part three of Project 2025, how democracy dies. And make sure you follow because President Bible salesman hawking an all-American holy book is just the tip of the Christian nationalist dick. Religion and Christianity Whoa. are the biggest things missing from this country. And Project 2025 is how they'll add that missing piece by enforcing Christian values via policy from the text itself. Our Constitution grants each of us the liberty to do not what we want, but what we ought. Like we ought to be pro-life and we ought to be straight. <laughs> Love how they had to specify unrelated. Raylene and I here are siblings. We get it on. More on their view of family in part four. Then there's the money. They want to funnel tax dollars from welfare programs to churches who are doing the Lord's work. Mm -hmm. And schools, they want to let the states take them over, which seems bad, seeing how Oklahoma handled the death of Next Benedict. Our religious state, we are going to fight to keep that bill out of the state of Oklahoma because we're a Christian state. And they got a plan to get butts in church by punishing businesses that are open on Sunday. No Chick-fil-A mm. is punishment enough. And if you think none of this will fly, know that most Republicans support declaring America a Christian nation. Great. Praise This is going to be some interesting stuff. America, why are you freaking out about Project 2025? Is it because you haven't read it and because you're believing the propaganda and the lies from the blue hair radical fascist left telling you that it's the most evil document ever created? Because if you go read it, you'll find that it's not. And what's more important, it's not even relevant anymore. And sure, I know that Donald Trump has recently had to come out vocally against Project 2025 because he's been accused of being the one behind it and advocating for it when that's never been the case. But the fact remains, we don't even need it anymore. You see, Project 2025 was put together by experts across multiple different industries who came together to try to figure out how to rein in an ever-increasing, increasingly aggressive and tyrannical federal government and the agencies that the federal government uses to put their foot on the throat of the American people. It was put together during a time when Chevron deference was the law of the land and federal agencies were creating laws without any electoral accountability. They were just making it up. But now that Chevron deference has been overruled, Project 2025 is largely irrelevant. It's not necessary because the overwhelming focus of that document was to rein in government. And now that Chevron deference is gone, we don't need a document to help us rein in the federal government. Now we have a court system that's given us full authority to do it ourselves. But there are some really good ideas that we could probably still pay attention to and use going forward. For example, one chapter in that book is focused on how to rein in an increasingly aggressive intelligence community. For example, it says that when someone leaves the intelligence community, they should have their clearance revoked so that they can't be used as political pawns by the Biden campaign or any other future campaign to help interfere in elections. For example, when 51 former intelligence community assets decided to put their signature on a letter saying that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation and they knew it was a lie, but they did it anyway. Well, Project 2025 proposes that that should be criminal. That's a good idea. That's something that we should be paying attention to. But overwhelmingly, we don't even need to document anymore. The Supreme Court gave us everything we need to rein in an expanding federal government. So next time one of your blue-haired, fascist, left-wing, <laughs> radical friends complains about Project 2025, just tell them it's not relevant. We don't need it anymore. Instead, we're going to use Agenda 47 to do what we want to do. I need to look up Agenda 47 myself. Conversation. So I'm going to make sure I ask you some questions. Let me know if you're having problems answering them because they really should be yes or no. Uh, let's see, you're the executive director for the American America First Legal, correct? That's correct. All right, and America First Legal is a member of Project 2025, which is dedicated to creating the playbook for the next conservative administration and what it calls the Project Pillars, correct? We are proud contributors to Project 2025. Okay. And uh, are you familiar with Project 2025's mandate for leadership? In fact, I am. Okay. 
And in fact, you wrote some of the sections of this mandate related to the DOJ, correct? Sure did. And the mandate outlines policy priorities for the next conservative president. Is that correct? It does. You've done a great job. I just want to let you know. All right. So let's walk through some of the provisions of the mandate. It calls for eliminating the Department of Education, eliminating the Department of Commerce, deploying the military for the use of domestic law enforcement against protesters under the Insurrection Act of 1807. It also has the repealing of Schedule F status for thousands of federal employees to allow a president to replace career civil servants with unqualified wow. partisan loyalists. That's probably my favorite of it. It also pro prohibits the FBI from combating the spread of misinformation and dis disinformation, like Russia and China, who are actively trying to interfere with American elections. I don't know why or how anybody can support Project 2025. And I know that there was allegedly a joke about um, dictators and whether or not that's funny, but in in the United States of America, dictatorships are never funny. And Project 2025 is giving the playbook for authoritarianism as well as the next dictator to come in. And I know that you are doing your jobs here by making sure that hopefully some juror turns on and finds some viral moment of you spewing more of the nonsense as it relates to the president, but as practicing lawyers or licensed attorneys, I hope that we can all agree that no one gets indicted because someone says so. There takes a grand jury, and the grand jury is comprised of American citizens that sit down and review evidence, and they make the determination. And when and if Trump is convicted, it will be a jury of his peers, and it won't be the president I'm of the United States. What he was about to go off your I'm... Donald Trump is telling us what he's going to do in a second term, and we need to listen to it. Um, he says that in the first term, a lot of the worst in instincts were stifled by two things. Him not knowing how the hell the federal government works and people saying, yo, you got to run for re-election. Those things are not the case in a second election. No. He knows how to weaponize the federal government. He's planning to fire civil servants with expertise and nonpartisan people, That's staff wild. the government with loyalists. He has an enemies list, which, by the way, includes the media. He came after MSNBC. He will truly go after the media in a second term. That's us. And we can't take him, we can't take him lightly because I can tell you right before I resigned, I was in an Oval Office meeting with a dozen, a dozen other staffers, and somebody had, he thinks, leaked a story about him going to the bunker uh, during the George Floyd protest. And he said, whoever did that should be executed. Whoa. He's used that terminology. He's used it talking about Chairman Milley. I cannot raise enough alarm bells about how dangerous Whoa. he is and how he needs to be stopped at all costs. Trump has on multiple occasions now, according to multiple former staffers and people that were in the rooms, said that certain individuals should be killed. The staffer who he believes leaked that he went to the bunker during the George Floyd protest should be executed. Mark Milley committed treason, and we know how we treat people, or at least used to treat people who committed treason. And Alyssa Farah Griffin is telling us the exact same thing that I've been saying, which is let's believe the guy, believe the things that he's telling us. Why wouldn't we believe them? And there are people who are taking this too lightly. There are people who are saying, well, he may want to do those things, but he was not going to succeed at doing them. That's not that's not a defense anymore. Trying to commit a crime and failing, trying to bribe someone, but they reject the bribe. We don't accept that as a defense anywhere else. And yet here they want it accepted as a defense. And the amazing thing is that others, including people like Lara Trump, are now projecting and reversing Trump's need to get, as he sees it, back into the Oval Office to prevent himself from going to prison, you've got mm. to see this next clip I'm going to show you that will explain what I'm talking about. That's it? Nah. <laughs> That's it? Project 2025 is already here. I, I don't know how else to tell y'all or how else to break it to y'all, but so many people have been asking me to speak about it, and I will. Here it is. It's already here, it's been here. It should have really been called Project 2019 or maybe even Project Infinity because they've been playing on our top for a long time. And our project is what? An experiment. We've been being experimented on for all of our lives. As I'm recording, look, look at this confirmation. 
Remember I told y'all previously that anytime I make these videos, I look for signs from my higher self to let me know that I'm on the right track and I'm giving y'all the right message. And that was one right there. So gratitude spirit. Back to what I was saying, the etymology for the word project from the 14th century, because remember it changes with time periods. So meanings of words change with time periods. Just keep that in mind. So from the 14th century, the word project meant plan, scheme, design. From the 15th century, it means to throw forward or to thrust forward. I mean, back to the plan, scheme, design definition. That lets you know right there, like I said, this is an experiment. The experiment is designed to keep you at your lowest state. So that means being in fear, having a lack mindset, living in scarcity, and thinking the worst about every situation. Although on paper, it doesn't look too good when you're reading about Project 2025, just know everything happens for a reason. Just change your perspective about everything. While everybody's like, oh, the money system is going to crash and they're going to take all our money, they're going to do this. Well, yeah, the money system is going to crash, but it has to. It has to. It's like this whole new world order thing. Of course, we could look at it from a bad standpoint or we could look at it from a positive standpoint. And I choose to look at it from a positive aspect because we need some new world order. Because the old world, that shit wasn't working. As above, so below. As within, so without. So spiritually, if we move into a new world or a new dimension, it only makes sense that we do the same in the physical realm. The overall message here is that the plans will only work the way they intend them to work if you go along with the plan. The minute we all stand up, the minute we all knock over that Monopoly board, y'all know the little picture that they have out there all over the internet. The moment everybody stands up, the moment we stop participating in this shit, the moment we stop upholding their agendas, the moment we realize that we create our own reality, game over. Y'all really probably think that's a game when people say that, but that is real actual factuals. The game is over. As long as you stop playing, the game is over. This is why collective consciousness, unity consciousness is so important because as long as everybody's on the same vibration, the same frequency, the same brain waves that are being sent out, because remember, that is how we communicate telepathically. As long as that's happening, their plans cannot and will not work. They cannot and will not work because they are nefarious. And because light, love, and positivity always trump negativity, it will never work. So to wrap it all up, I just want to say, start looking at things from a different perspective, a different lens. Because like if you always look at it from the angle that they want you to look at it from, then that means that you're going along with their plan and their design. And their design is always nefarious. Just know that. I'm going to just say this. Turn the TV off. Turn that news off. Stop scrolling these news outlets. Stop paying attention to this news. Because once you understand that tell lie vision, tell lies to your vision, we live in a matrix, which is Ma's tricks. We use a remote control because that is what has been done to us our whole lives. We're being remotely controlled. Mm. Turn the channel because they're channeling your energy. So you can either dismantle their plans or you can be a part of it. The beautiful thing about life that they won't tell you is that we do have free will and we have choices up to you on which way you want to go change your perception change your life that's my thoughts about project 2025 peace love and light and gratitude for watching i like that change your perspective you might have seen there's this big new york times story today big story very important story about how the leading republican presidential candidate donald trump um, and republicans more broadly have this plan that they want to put in place if the Republican Party wins the presidency in 2024. Uh, they're calling it Project 2025 because this is a plan that's supposed to go into effect upon the inauguration of Donald Trump in 2025. Either Trump or some other Republican president gets inaugurated in January of 2025 and Project 2025 thereby goes into effect. This plan is being coordinated by a right-wing think tank called the Heritage Foundation, and it is a plan to radically change the form of governance that we have in the United States so as to concentrate all the power of the government in the hands of a single leader. Quote, our current executive branch was conceived of by liberals. What's necessary is a complete system overhaul. Quote, what we're trying to do is identify the pockets of independence inside the U.S. government and seize them.
seize them so there won't be any more pockets of independent power outside the pockets outside the power that is held by the president now as i said they, they want this to be donald trump they want him to be the guy uh, in whose hands all this power is concentrated but they say they would plan to do this with any republican president the plan is to change the structure of the U.S. government so the next president, the next Republican president, will take direct control of all state power. Mm. He would, for example, take over all federal law enforcement and run that directly for his own benefit through the DOJ. There would be no more independence of federal law enforcement. Um, the next president would take control of private business in this country for his own benefit through the powers wow. of the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, the next president would revive an old and, I should say, illegal practice called impoundment, which would basically take away the fundamental powers of Congress and put that power, too, in Trump's hands. Great. Again, identify the pockets of independence and seize them. So instead of checks and balances and limited government, we'd have more of a, a strongman system of government. We'd have a single leader with all the power of the state personally arrogated to him. No other part of the government, no other thing in the country at all would be allowed to constrain him. That sounds nice. It at least sounds simple. <laughs> That said, it is obviously um, fundamentally opposite to the whole idea of why we exist as a country in the first place. And I, I think it's no surprise to see an article like this, to see reporting like this in the Times today. I think everybody sort of knows that this is where the American political right, where the Republican Party has been heading in the Trump era. But still, I think the reason this reporting today is getting so much attention and causing so much consternation is because, you know, however much this might be the, the, the dream of the Trump era right wing in American politics, for the most part, the American people really don't want this. And so it's one thing to like sort of see it hinted at or to feel like this is the kind of system they'd like to replace our system with. It's another thing to see it in black letter print, right? To, to find out that they've put a name on it, that it's a project that has an implementation date and they're getting it ready. I mean, in general, by and large, the American people don't want to live under a single leader who has concentrated all power in his own hands and nothing constrains him and nothing else matters other than his own whims and preferences and grudges. Mm -hmm. You don't want to live in a country under a leader like that who's a good guy, let alone a leader like that who's a bad guy. I mean, you don't have to be a civics dork to know that you don't want that. <laughs> and, and I think by and large, the American people really don't. Spicy. Hey, it's my first day of work. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, yeah, good, good thing she's here. Um, so we actually cannot move forward with bringing you on the team anymore. What do you mean? I already filled out the W-2, like I'm hired. Like, So I'm sure you know, but with the recent laws passed, we have to fire you because what you are doing is illegal. What do you mean? I've never done anything illegal in my life. Like, what are you talking about? So we looked at your social media yesterday and we saw some interesting photographs of you with someone of the same sex. And we, yeah, no. I'm not even doing anything sexual in those pictures. I'm literally at Pride. Like, yeah. So with the recent laws, um, homosexuality is now considered a crime. So... Mm. A crime. So you want to legalize federal misinformation and make it illegal for the FBI to interfere with this? Yes. You want to eliminate the Department of Education, the Department of Commerce, and deploy the military to any form of protest in America? Yes. It says here you want to allow the president to replace federal employees with who he deems loyalists. That will agree to any bill he wants to pass. Yes. So you basically want to legalize a dictatorship? Yes. I'm not done talking! 
Right. You basically want to legalize a dictatorship and take away the working class's ability to protest and fight for their rights. Giving total power to the ones who have more money and not to the yeah. ones that made them De rich. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yes. So just a personal question. This would openly create new slaves. How are you agreeing to all of this? Because I'm rich and none of this actually affects me and some of it benefits me, even if it's to the detriment of the rest of the population. So you're OK mm -hmm. with oppressing the majority of America as long as it means more power for you and your team? Yes, I'm definitely okay with that. <laughs> My family's good. But have you considered the families that aren't good? Also, the fact that the wrong person in power could pass unethical bills and destroy America. Oh, oh, oh. I just told you I'm rich. I don't care about any of this. Just pass the bill. Yes to everything. I got things to do. So well, money has okay. led to your abandonment of ethics, morality, and any sense of empathy for the rest yes. of America. So you are a legal terrorist. Yes! Yes! Yeah! Well, I'm rich too, so whatever. I'll pass it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Project 2025 likely isn't going to happen, and even if it did, it wouldn't be this the end of the crazy. world. It'd probably be a good thing. The Heritage Foundation, the think tank behind Project 2025, have very little power, especially compared to the American Israeli Political Action Committee. The United Nations Agenda 2030 would be more restrictive of your freedoms, your freedoms, than uh, Project 2025 would. If you're afraid of the idea of the largest mass deportation in history, just know that that would only have to be like 1.4 million people. Which is fucking nothing. And since 2018, we've known that there's between 11 million and 22 million illegals. And another 12 million have crossed in the last four years. 3.2 million came in 2023. Nearly 1 trillion US dollars are sent in untaxed remittances to foreign nations by people who currently inhabit the United States. Contrary to popular belief, illegal inhabitants do pay some sort of taxes. Those being income taxes, Medicare, and Social Security taxes. Although that accounts for less than 1% of the total contribution to the United States tax revenue, and they account for nearly 10% of the US population. Nearly 60% of all of those non-resident aliens we're aware of are on some form of government program. Many of them get free transportation through buses, railways, and planes to wherever they would like to move to. Many cities are putting in initiatives spending billions of dollars to house these people for free in luxury apartments, hotels, putting them up in schools. Notably, this has been a what? major issue for New York City. The most complaints apartment. are made about discretionary spending on the United States military spending. But people don't really talk about mandatory spending or the spending on government programs. Four trillion dollars a year. In 2022, it was 4.1 trillion. Or about 4.4 times higher than our spending on national defense. While many changes and audits could be made to every single aspect of national spending, the United States spends so much more than they take in. About a 1.7 trillion dollar deficit per year. Spending Ooh. on immigrations and customs enforcement rarely tops 25 billion. Even if it was 100 billion, plus the National Guard being federalized, it still would not rival what we spend on immigration. Non-resident aliens are eligible to get means-tested welfare benefits, as well as assistance to needy families, public education, health care, housing, and many other programs. They do receive two times more than they pay in in taxes. If the total number of non-resident aliens is only 12.5 million, then the total cost to the United States taxpayer is about $84 billion in government expenditure. If the number again is 12.5 million and not above that, the cost of amnesty would be about 3.8 trillion US dollars. So leftists can do this fear-mongering tactic saying that it's bad to try to defend your border or to have laws for immigration and naturalization. Alternatively, conservatives rely heavily on the idea that there are drugs and terrorists coming across the border. It's a lot harder to explain to people that there's a net drag on the system when things aren't done properly. It's a lot harder to explain a position that this is significantly costly to public transportation, public education, public health care, and public social programs, as well as costing you if you're trying to get a job. Native born workers in the United States have lost 2 million jobs since the February of 2020. Mm. Here's a better display of that graph coming from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. In total, in this year alone, Non-resident aliens have gained 1.16 million jobs, and native-born Americans have lost about 500,000 jobs. Wow. If such a program actually were to happen, which I don't believe it will, it would pay for itself in terms of total government spending on National Guard and Immigration Customs Enforcement. Heavily auditing the United States military spending, ending all foreign aid, reworking social programs, repatriating the non-resident alien population, would mean that the United States would be able to run a budget surplus even keeping the military the same size. This is a lot going on, man. Harp has had some stuff to say in response to all these conspiracy theories, and here are some of the answers that they have uh, to people's lingering questions. 
Harp scientists have claimed that radio waves, which they use the antennas to send into the ionosphere, cannot manipulate the weather or cause weather events. One of the more bizarre rumors about Harp is that it can make caribou walk backwards with its radio waves. As the rumor goes, one day in the small town of Glen Allen, Alaska, the caribou randomly started walking backwards. One of these alleged witnesses called Anchorage Daily News and said it was caused by Harp mind control. When Harp was planning on closing in 2014, he told a Senate committee that we're moving on to other ways of managing the ionosphere, which the Harp was really designed to do to inject energy into the ionosphere to be able to actually control it. So some people took that quote as saying as Harp can control the ionosphere, but is that really what David was saying? Harp can control a very tiny part of the ionosphere for their experiments, but that doesn't mean that they can control the entire ionosphere. They just want to control shit. For those who don't know, this is HARP. The High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. It's the world's most capable high power, high frequency transmitter for study of the ionosphere. A very controversial subject, many think HARP can manipulate the weather on our planet, known as the weather weapon to most conspiracy theorists. What's your thoughts? The weather weapon? They have been desensitizing us since we were born. And I'll give you some examples. Let's start with the big one. Let's start with words we hear all the time and never even think about. Let's start with the word entertainment. To entertain. What does that mean? To bind or hold. To bind or hold what? An audience's attention. Okay, now let's take the word Hollywood. Where does that come from? Well, Hollywood comes from the holly tree. And the ancient Druids, back in the day, used to take the holly tree, make wands to weave spells, cast spells, or channel spells. And when they needed help, they would consult the magis or the mediums of the day to help mm. channel their spells to the population. Wow. We'll cut to today. Wow. What do we have in our houses? We have these black boxes. What are they called? TVs. But if you stop and you say the word tell a vision, television. And when you turn on that television, what do you get? What's the first thing that pops up? A list of channels. And when you turn on those channels, what's on those channels? The following program programming. They are programming you. They've right. been programming your whole life. You don't even know it. They do it with your music. They do it with your TV. They do it with your movies. They do it with your games. They have been programming us and programming you since you were little and you don't even know it because you don't even question it. Don't even question it. There's a strange humming sound that has been heard in all of the highlighted places on this map. The humming sound is said to be low frequency and very invasive to those who hear it. Some of the more popular locations that this humming sound has been heard has been in Scotland, England, and Australia. And in the United States, it's been heard in Taos, New Mexico. What does that mean? This sound heard in numerous places it is usually heard only in quiet environments, only a few percent of people. Researchers and scientists have said maybe the sound is just coming from mating fish in the area. Maybe it's coming from a submarine. There's a possibility that the sound is coming from wind farms. Many people are skeptical and believe the sound is coming from radio waves or the earth putting off a strange frequency. A lot of people can't hear the sound, but there is a specific group of people called hum hearers, and they're usually men in their 40s who hear the sound and they say it drives them crazy. It's invasive and causes severe migraines. What do you think the sound is being caused by? Wow. Wow, never heard of that before. Have you heard the craziest conspiracy theory about Ellen DeGeneres that is so dark? especially after what they found in her house. As you know, Ellen has been described as an evil and devilish person to work with what? at The Ellen Show. Staff would describe their experience working with her as being ran by intimidation, fear, 
bullying, allegations that employees were being SA'd and touched by higher level what? executives, and Ellen knew about it. While hosting wow. her show, Ellen was also tied to the Illuminati after repeatedly flashing the symbol. It's also interesting that her set matches the building on Epstein Island with white and blue stripes, wow. gold touches, and palm trees. What? He's been frequently closely tied to the lizard person conspiracy theory. Even her home staff described her as evil and would say that her true personality comes out at home and it's worse than anything you've heard she's done at work. Look closely at this video of Ellen at home because it could expose evil and devilish parts of her private life. If you saw in the background of that video, through the glare of the window, you can see this painting that says evil thoughts and it's a devil's face. The Whoa. artist who made that painting, who's been dead for a long time, painted a lot of Satan worshiping pieces. Not to mention this symbolism directly on her sweatshirt while she's broadcasting. Then look at another photo of Ellen sitting in her house with a painting in the background with suspicious symbols on them that are eerily similar to symbols you use in Satanic worshiping rituals. The scariest one of all these is of Ellen giving her mother a haircut and look closely at the painting behind her. I believe it says R.I.P. on the bottom above her mother's head. Before I tell you the craziest part about all this, make sure you follow so you finally know all the craziest conspiracy theories about each of these celebrities and requests who you want to see next. All of these different pieces and paintings found are from different artists, so why does Ellen always go out of her way to find this type of dark symbolism to express herself? <sighs> this is a lie, man. If you want to know if somebody's getting like in the Illuminati or being tested is a lot of black comedians, they put them in a dress. Cat Williams interview and he was like breaking everything down with like the Illuminati and all yeah, that yeah. shit. So pretty much what he said was if almost every single black comedian has put on a dress. Now one of them being Kevin Hart and Kevin Hart even made a joke about it. Yo, I'll never be put in a dress. I'll never be put in a dress. This and that. Damn, Kevin Hart ended up in a dress. Really? Right. Yeah. Why though? So it's part of what they call like a humiliation, humiliation yeah, ritual, yeah. right? If you look back at every single comedian, especially the ones that were popping for their generation, yeah. when they're on their way up, that's when they, they make them do it. Now, one of the biggest ones being, but before continuing, I wanted to warn you guys that phones were being spied on. Click on this icon, then on more. If you see it, delete it immediately. One of the biggest ones being Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle didn't. He oh. didn't, but that was when he had to leave Hollywood, remember? Mm. Because he, he knew like there's something going yep. on. Yeah, yeah. Dave yep. yep. He got out of there. They said he was crazy. Do you ever heard of like the 44 hertz frequency? I have no clue what you're talking about. So in the 50s, the Rockefeller family, which is like one of the richest families in the world yeah, at the time, yeah. they changed like the frequency of like music and whatever stuff we listen to from 432 to 440. But they mm -hmm. said when you turn it to this frequency, it like shuts off one side of your brain because you know you have two hemispheres of your brain so once you listen to stuff like that it like shuts off the creativity side people started Ooh. realizing like they're also the people that created our learning system and they were the people that said like we don't want a nation of thinkers we want a nation of workers so they're saying that the frequency in a sense is just like a way to like change people's dna to where it's like you don't mm. really think no, for yourself more you could tell a kind of about the kind of music they listen to. Most times, those people have different characters. They right? do. Maybe it's it's a stretch, but even X was saying it for a while before he died. He was saying like frequencies of the music that you yeah. listen to is like brainwashing, whatever. And even there was yeah. a couple of artists that didn't play in like that frequency. The artist was Bob Marley and John Lennon. Mm. He got Bob Marley got, but I just think they found ways to like control us where it doesn't seem like they're controlling us, but it yeah. might be. Right. I've definitely heard of that for, before. The High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HARP for short, was a U.S. government-funded facility in Alaska. Officially, it studied Earth's ionosphere, but many think it has a darker purpose. Some believe that HARP is a secret weapon for weather manipulation, mm. mind control, or even having the ability to cause earthquakes. Dang. And get this, HARP shut down in 2013, but some say it's still operational, hidden from the public's eye. Are they just waiting for the perfect moment to unleash their power? What do you think? Is HARP a secret weapon or just a misunderstood research project? Let me know in the comments. And if you're hungry for more, smash that like button and comment below for full details on the topic. Remember, the truth is out there. Like, comment, and subscribe for more Thought Files. Turns out the same night everyone was seeing these northern lights, HARP was conducting a test. And keep this in mind, HARP stands for High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. And the word auroral just means related to the astronomical phenomenon of auroras, otherwise known as the Northern Lights. 
Now, their official reason for the test was to study the mechanisms of detecting orbiting space debris, so helping satellites avoid running into space junk. But I thought HARP was about studying the ionosphere, right? Mm. Well, that's what their website says. And how far up is the ionosphere? About 50 to 400 miles up. And how far up is all that space debris? About 1,200 miles. Don't worry, the math totally checks out. <laughs> and lately, there have been some wild theories about whether these northern lights were natural or man-made. So my first question was, is it even possible for this heart machine to cause artificial northern lights? Well, yes, they can, and they have in the past. Mm -hmm. So now that we know that it is possible, was it a coincidence that we saw some of the most intense northern lights on the same night that HARP was conducting their test? And mm -hmm. is it a coincidence that HARP's test was set to last for three days, and so was the solar storm? Is it a coincidence that lately on social media, if you mention three specific words together, you'll have your video taken down or you'll be censored? So is it just another coincidence or is it a conspiracy theory? Let me know in the comments. Okay, we got to put our tinfoil hat back on for this one, y'all. This is weird. So I come across this post on my Twitter. Um, can someone please tell me what the F is going on in the background? Okay, photo number one. Boom. Look in the background. Get your full. Shit's getting weird. Photo number two. It's a little weirder. Hold on, let's zoom in. Mm. It's AI? This is weirder. Like, what's happening here? So I'm like, this is no way that this is real. I'm gonna, let me go to her page myself so that I can see if this is even real. Well, I'll be doggone. It's really on her page, March 16th. Y'all see that right there? And I'm zooming in myself so that y'all can see, like, this is a real photo on her page. Look at that one. What in the reptilian hell is going on? What? Need somebody to explain to me like I'm three years old why America's Got Talent has shapeshifters in the audience. Mm. And if these aren't shapeshifters, then what the hell is it? And why would someone, especially a host of America's Got Talent, be editing faces in the background of her photos? This is not April Fool's. This was posted on March 16th. It's on her page right now. Somebody tell me, because th for those of you who are so good at refuting conspiracies, give me an answer for this in the comments. Thank you. That looks like some AI stuff. What's the point of music? Niggas don't know. It's not always to have fun. Sometimes it's to help people find themselves because music is frequency programming. Mm. What fre frequency are you being fed? So I was playing with frequency. I was playing with equalizers. I figured, I figured out that hurts is to understand the frequency vibration, right? Kilohertz, megahertz. If I play with those frequencies, right, I can target certain parts of the mind and I can literally, like if I want you to astral project, right? Or if I want you to go to sleep, or if I want you to go into a meditative state, I can make my music do that. These little mm. niggas out here don't give a fuck enough to go into that science, bro. These little niggas ain't studying kilohertz, megahertz, and doing all this shit. Rest in peace, bro. It honestly blows my mind how nobody's talking about this. The truth about Bob Marley. Bob Marley, Marley was a singer back in 1977. For those who don't know, he died in 1977 from a type of cancer in his big toe. But here's when things get crazy. He didn't get cancer from a natural way. An ex-CIA agent actually literally admitted to giving Bob Marley cancer. Here's how the whole story went. A fan approached him at a concert and offered him a pair of boots as a gift. And of course, Bob Marley, being the peaceful man that he was, accepted the gift. And the fan insists that he tried them on, so he put them on, and then he said, Ouch, my brother! Mm. Because there was a needle inside the boots that pricked his big toe. And back then, in the time, him and his family didn't think anything of it. They just thought it was some random spike. But guess what? Years later, that same big toe that got poked was the same big toe that got diagnosed with cancer, which is what caused his death. Wow. All he wanted to do was spread love. But follow me for more. Let's get all right so that was creepy conspiracy theory tiktoks there was a lot of stuff going on about project 2025 that was definitely crazy a lot about the harp with the hertz and the sound waves and frequencies y'all gotta let me know in the comments what y'all think about this stuff make sure y'all do y'all own research i say that all the time but if you made it this far in this video in particular you need to drop real one for real in the comments because that was a lot to digest it's a lot going on right now it is a lot 
make sure you're taking care of yourself man make sure you're taking care of your your space and the people around you <sighs> if you into this type of stuff i got a tiktok playlist you can go ahead and check it out but take care of yourself man Till next time, self-love and positivity, Fire Squad, I got you when you know it.